Hi there, kids. It's me, Miss Booksy. You kids know that I love stories. Fairy tales, folk tales, I love them all. Today, we're going to look at some of my favorites. Oh, like Milan. Let's read that one right now. Hello, kids. Gather round. It's fairy tale time. Today's story goes way back to ancient China. It's the story of Mulan. Once upon a time, a baby girl named Hua Mulan was born. She was a very brave little girl. By the time she was five years old, she had already tamed a tiger. Bad kitty. Walked on a super high tightrope and rescued a kitten from a tree. She was so brave, she wasn't even scared of the dark. Well, as long as her nightlight was on. When Mulan was older, but not quite a grown-up, she heard some very bad news. There was going to be a battle, and one man from every family had to go fight the enemy. It was boys only back then. No girls allowed. In Mulan's family, it was just her, her grandfather, and her baby brother. Mulan looked at her grandpa. He was old, so old. He just did crossword puzzles all day and couldn't hear anything, even if you shouted. Hi, Grandpa. Huh? I said, hi. Huh? Grandpa's pretty old. He can't hear very well. Huh? Oh, bye. Then Mulan looked at her brother. He was so little. He couldn't even ride a horse into battle. They probably didn't even make uniforms in his size. Mulan knew what she had to do. She cut her hair, dressed up in her best fighting outfit, and bravely marched out to join the army. Along the way, she practiced being a boy. Hello there, mister. Hey, dude. What's up, bro? When she reported for duty, nobody seemed to know she was a girl. Probably because she could do so many push-ups and was wicked good at swordplay. No one expected that from a young girl back then. Mulan quickly became the best soldier around. She was feeling pretty cool. And then the big horn sounded. Oh, by the way, that was a sign that the enemy was coming and it was time to fight. But don't be nervous, kids. Mulan was ready. She jumped on her horse and galloped towards the invaders, yelling like this. Yeah! The other soldiers joined in and charged, all yelling Mulan's fierce battle cry. Yeah! 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 This scared the socks off the invaders. Seriously, their socks flew right off. I've never seen anything like it. When she got to the general of the enemy army, he was curled up into a ball. He was so scared. He wasn't a very brave general. Please don't hurt me, sir. I don't want to hurt you, but you guys got to go. You're being bullies. Thank you for your mercy. You're a good man. Thanks, but I'm an even awesomer girl. The general was confused, but that's okay. Mulan had won the battle. Later, there was a big celebration to honor the soldiers, especially the brave young person who had saved them all. Mulan wore her prettiest dress and put flowers in her hair. When she accepted her medal, everyone was like, she's a girl, awesome. Wow. Whoa. Cool. Then they cheered and said, for she's a jolly good fellow. 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 Which nobody can deny. And she was the end. All right, kids, have a seat in a chair or a couch. It's fairy tale time. Once upon a time, no specific time, just once, there was this girl who was trapped under a nasty spell by a nasty witch. Her name was Rapunzel. Anyway, this witch wanted to keep Rapunzel forever and ever and never share her with anyone else because Rapunzel was so sweet and so perfect. So, in addition to keeping her in a massive tower, the witch cursed her with very, very long hair. Hair that grew almost two feet every day. 
And all that hair weighed so much that Rapunzel absolutely couldn't leave. All she could do was hang around and solve jigsaw puzzles. Well, one day a handsome prince came looking for her and he called out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, what's up? Um, I could use a little help up here. Throw down your hair, princess. I will save you. And so he climbed up Rapunzel's hair, used some of it to tie up the nasty, nasty witch, and then used a bow and arrow to shoot the end of the hair down to a tree to create a zip line and zip line the girl to safety. Once they were safe, the prince gave her a chocolate kiss, which not only broke the spell and made her a princess, but also made her start square dancing. And that is how Rapunzel was saved. The end. Hello there, children. Have a seat or stand. Do what you like. It's Cool School's Fairy Tale Time. Our tale is one of vegetables and princesses. Yes, it's the princess and the pea. Lovely. Once upon a time, there was a very picky prince. His socks had to match his shirt or he wouldn't leave the castle. And he would only eat his peas if they were served with baby carrots and a side of ranch dressing and a pickle. Very particular. His bed pillows had to be fluffed exactly six times each before he could even think about going to bed. That little prince grew up and it was time for him to find a princess and get married. But like always, he was very, very picky. No, too tall, too short, nostrils are too big. Do you prefer dogs or cats? Wrong, I like hamsters. Next, what do you like on your pizza? Pineapple, ew. Who do you like better, Spider-Man or The Flash? My Little Pony, wrong answer. Can you rub your tummy and pat your head at the same time? Next! Who does he think he is, a prince? Well, actually, yes. Then, one night, a terrible thunderstorm was raging outside. A girl, who said she was a princess, but was late because of the rainstorm and a shoe falling off in a puddle and her getting a blister on a big toe. Well, anyway, she came to the castle door. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry to bother you, but it's literally raining cats and dogs out there, and I really must change into some dry clothes. Plus, the rain makes my hair, like, totally frizzy, and I just can't deal with that. But the prince liked her, because he also didn't like it when his hair got frizzy. He told her to come in, and he quickly asked her the important questions one needs to ask when they're picking out a princess. What do you like better, cats or dogs? I prefer hamsters. Ha <laughs> ha. What do you like on your pizza? What? Nothing! That would ruin the pizza! Spider-Man or The Flash? Duh! Spider-Man! And she could totally rub her tummy while patting her head while standing on one foot! Wow! The prince really liked her, but he thought she was too good to be true. He just didn't believe she was actually a real princess. He did what any good prince does when he doesn't know what to do. He asked his mom, the queen. She did a quick check on Google. Oh yes, the classic pea test. The queen placed one tiny little green pea underneath the mattress in the guest bedroom. If she's a real princess, then she'd feel the pea and wouldn't be able to sleep. Just to be really extra super duper 100% positively completely sure, the queen added another few mattresses and lots of soft feather mattress toppers and, out of habit, fluffed the pillows six times each. That night, the princess could not sleep at all. Perhaps it was the rainstorm outside, or maybe a bad dream, or maybe it was the pea. The next morning when they gathered for breakfast, the young lady couldn't stop yawning. <sighs> How did you sleep, my dear? Well, the room was lovely, and the pillows were, like, perfectly fluffed. But there was this huge bump, like, right in the middle of my back. It was terrible. I thought it was a huge rock, and it kept me tossing and turning all night. Well, I did some digging, and I found this. A pea! A pea, you say? 
I quite love peas. Oh, so do I. But only with baby carrots and a little ranch dip on the side. Maybe a pickle. Mom, it's her. She's the one. The perfect princess. The girl was not only a total princess, she turned out to have a megaton in common with the prince. They were both very picky, but they were very picky about all the same things, so they had to get married. Everyone at the wedding agreed they were a perfect pair. Well, not that kind of pair. Anyway, they were just like peas and carrots. With a little ranch dip, of course. Kind of a fairy tale ending, don't you think? Hiya, kiddos! It's fairy tale time. Once upon a time, there was a little chicken aptly named Chicken Little. Cause, as previously discussed, she was a little chicken. Chicken Little was a wee little hen who was known around the kingdom for her good advice. All the animals would come to her with their problems. Gus Van Goose would ask Chicken Little about his stories when he couldn't come up with a good ending. How about they all lived happily ever after? Is that good? Yes, my good goose. That's a good ending. Lily Lizardson would ask Chicken Little about sunbathing and proper precautions to avoid sun damage. This will help. Oh my gosh, Chicken Little, thanks so much! And Turtle Thompson would ask Chicken Little for help when he couldn't think of a rhyme for his raps. Change the color of his head to red. Nothing really rhymes with orange. Ha <laughs> ha, that's brilliant. Thanks, Chicken Little. Chicken Little always had a solution for everything. Well, one day, Chicken Little was eating lunch under a maple tree when a squirrel rushed by with an armful of acorns. And one of these acorns fell and hit Chicken Little right smack dab in the middle of her head. Then the acorn bounced right back up and into a hole in the tree, leaving no evidence that it was ever there in the first place. Chicken Little looked around. She looked up. She looked down, she looked all around, and she couldn't put her finger on what hit her in the head. Well, Chicken Little always had an answer for everything, and so she thought long and hard. Let's see, I'm sitting under a maple tree, and I happen to know that all maple trees grow seeds that look like tiny little helicopters. So it couldn't have been a seed, and it definitely wasn't a stick. Don't see any robin's eggs anywhere, and there's no kids with slingshots anywhere around! There's only one other thing that's up, and that's the sky. The sky must be falling! This made Chicken Little very afraid, and there was only one thing to do. Tell the king! Chicken Little packed up some of her things in a little bandana, tied it to the end of a stick, threw it over her shoulder, and hit the road. Honk! Hey, Chicky, where are you going? I was sitting under this tree here when a piece of the sky fell and hit me right on the head. Oh my, that must mean... What does that mean? That means the sky is falling and I must go tell the king. Wow, that's scary. Well, Gus Van Goose was a good goose, one of the best. And so he offered to go with Chicken Little to make sure she got there okay and delivered the very important news. But they had only traveled a few feet together when... Hey, girlfriend! Hey, Gus Van Goose! Where are you two guys going? You haven't heard? The sky is falling and a big piece fell and almost squashed Chicken Little. Whoa, that's scary. That's what I said. You have to tell the king. That's what I said! And so, Lily Lizardson joined the two of them on their journey to tell the king the very important news. Well, they only made it about halfway around the lake when... hey -o, Chicky Pie, you look stressed. Oh my gosh, the sky is falling! A huge piece hit Chicken Little and almost crushed her. And we decided it's so important we have to go tell the king. Whoa, you're gonna need some protection, girl. That is a long trip. I'll come with you. And so the four friends traveled to the king, spreading the word as they went. They traveled over the river, through the woods, past grandmother's house, and all the way to the king's castle. And when they got there, the king was surprised to see them. What are all of you doing here? Shouldn't you be out in the wild? Get this, king. The world is ending. And what proof do you have? Um, a piece of the sky fell down and almost squashed us. It fell and hit Chicken Little right here, right smack dab in the middle of the head. May I see this piece of sky that you speak of? 
Um, yeah. Show them the sky, chicken. Show them what you got. Well, you see, I... I don't have it. Then how do you know it was the sky? It could have been anything. Well, there was nothing above me except for a tree. And there was nothing on the ground around me after I got hit. And... And? And I always have an answer for everything. So I thought real hard, and the only thing I could think of was... That the sky was falling? Yes, King. Let me ask you something, Chicken Little. Do you think I always have the answers to everything? Yes, King, of course. Well, I don't. <gasps> it's true. Sometimes things happen and I just don't have any answers as to why. And that's okay. Doesn't mean the sky is falling. So it's okay to not have the answers sometimes? It better be. According to the Queen, sometimes when I have the answer, I'm not always right. Sometimes the best thing to do is say, I don't know, but maybe we can figure it out together. And so the King traveled back with Chicken Little to take a look at the tree that she had been sitting under. And after waiting around for a while, a squirrel came running by and yelled down to them, Hey guys, did you see an acorn I dropped yesterday? I got home and counted up my loot and I was one short. I think I might have dropped it around here. They checked inside the hole in the tree, and there was the missing acorn! The squirrel was happy, and Chicken Little was happy because she learned that the sky was not falling, and that sometimes it's okay to not know all of the answers. Alright kiddos, here's a fairy tale for ya. It's called The Three Billy Goats Graph. <coughs> so one time, there were three Billy Goats. There was Billy Senior, his son Billy Junior, and his grandson, Billy the Third. Three generations of Billy Goats named Billy, and their last name was Gruff. Being Billy Goats, they loved to eat grass. They even ate the dandelions in the grass, which I personally find kind of yucky. Well, one day, they had finally eaten all the grass in their small field, which was okay for about 15 minutes, and then they were hungry again. Well, wouldn't you know, across the way and over a very large canyon was a beautiful field. Tall, lush grass just blowing in the wind. But the only way to get there was to travel across a very, very, very long bridge. A wobbly bridge. And it was dangling 100,000 feet above a gulch. It was quite terrifying. But the Billies were hungry, and so they decided to try and cross it. Billy Jr., why don't you go first? For you are much lighter than I am, and we need to make sure the bridge is safe. Bah! Well, Billy the Third is much smaller than me. Why don't you go across first? Bah! Billy the Third was a good son and a great grandson. Well, actually, a very good grandson, because a great-grandson means something else. But anyway, he agreed. The bridge was long and treacherous, which means scary, because it was very wobbly. But he did pretty well, until he got right in the middle, where he met a troll! And as we all know, trolls love to eat goats, especially goats named Billy. Uh, hey, are you a goat? Is your name Billy? Why, yes it is. There's three of us. Billy Sr., Billy Jr., and me, Billy Three. Hmm. I'm gonna eat you now, okay? Hold on. I'm just a wee little goat with barely any meat on my bones. If you wait, I can go across the bridge and eat some grass for a few weeks and get big and juicy. Then I'll be even more delicious. Uh, okay. And so, the troll let Billy the Third across the bridge and waited for the next goat. Because we all know trolls are very greedy and not very smart. Once we Billy the Third got to the meadow, he knew he had to warn his dad and grandpa about the troll. So he flew a paper airplane back across the canyon to Billy Jr. It said, Hey dad, I made it. P.S. Watch out for the... <sighs> Little wee Billy the Third didn't know how to spell the word troll, so he tried drawing one. Oof. Keep your day job, little Billy. Billy Jr. wasn't sure what he was supposed to watch out for, so he decided to be extra careful when he crossed. Yeah. Hey, are you a goat named Billy too? I'm gonna eat you now, okay? Whoa, 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 hold on a second. You should know something first. 
The next goat coming across is really big and really tasty. If you eat me, you'll be too full. Why don't you let me go ahead, and while you're eating the next goat, I'll eat some grass and get big and tasty as him. Um, okay. And so the troll let him across to the big field, where he was reunited with his son, and they sent a paper airplane over the gulch to Billy Sr. And it only said one word, which Billy Jr. fortunately knew how to spell. Troll! Grandpa Billy Sr. knew what he had to do. He crossed the bridge, and then he got to the troll. Oh no, you're too big! And he was right. Billy Sr. was much bigger and stronger than the troll. Um, I'd like to try and eat you, if uh, that's okay. I don't think so. Bah. Billy Sr. took his horns and launched the troll off the bridge and all the way up into outer space, where he could no longer bother any more goats especially goats named Billy. And the three Billy Goats Gruff ate endless grass and dandelions for the rest of their days. You might say the moral of this story is, if you're a goat, don't name your son Billy. And if you're a troll, well, get an education. And if that doesn't work, invest in a rocket ship. The end. All right, kids, get ready. It's fairy tale time. Once upon a time. That's what we old folks say when we're not sure of the date. But way back when, there was an old man who built puppets. The kind with strings attached to their arms and legs and heads, called marionettes, actually. This man was a very lonely old man, and so he would build these puppets to keep them company. Pretty smart, actually. Well, one day, this old man built a puppet so amazing that it actually started to move on its own. Well, hi. Are you my papa? I sure am. And you are Pinocchio. Beautiful. What a lovely way to end a story. But that's not the end. For you see, a traveling circus came into town that day, which was run by the big bad wolf. And this wolf had gotten into the business of convincing children to run away with him and perform in the circus. But it wasn't as fun as that sounds. The wolf made them walk on a tightrope, which was really scary, and swing on the trapeze, which made them really dizzy, and brush lions' manes, which was really dangerous. Worst of all, they had to clean up after the elephants when they did their business. Sorry. But Pinocchio didn't know about any of that. He just wanted to see the show. Well, that night, the old man gave Pinocchio some money and asked him to run to the store to buy some milk. Okay, Papa. But he was going to buy a ticket to the circus instead. And because it was a lie, his nose started to grow. Well then, Pinocchio went to the circus and had the time of his life. But he saw all the other children in the crowd eating popcorn and cotton candy, and he was sad that he couldn't eat anything because he was made of wood. So after the show, just as the first star began to sparkle in the sky, he made a wish. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might turn into a real boy tonight. Well. The big bad wolf saw Pinocchio and thought that a wooden boy would be a great circus act. And he can use that giant nose to spin plates on top of. So he put on an old dress from the circus costume trunk and walked over to Pinocchio. So you want to be a real boy, eh? Wow, you heard my wish. Are you my fairy godmother? I sure am. To be a real boy, all you have to do is run away from home and join the circus. But Pinocchio didn't feel so good about that. He would miss his papa too much, and he knew his papa would miss him. In fact, the old man was probably wondering why he was taking so long to get that milk. I'm so thirsty. And besides, this fairy godmother looked a little odd. Why are your hands so fuzzy? And why are your ears so big? And why are your teeth so sharp? Wait a second. You're the big bad wolf, aren't you? Ah! 
Are you okay? What took so long? And then Pinocchio made the first real boy decision of his entire life. He told the truth. I used the money to go to the circus. The big bad wolf tried to get me to run away, but I just couldn't leave you. I'm sorry, Papa. It's okay, Pinocchio. I am disappointed, but you did the right thing. You came back and you told the truth and you said you were sorry. And because Pinocchio did that, his wooden nose went back to normal size and then it turned into a real nose. And his wooden head, it turned into a real head. And he turned into a real boy. The old man was so happy and they decided to celebrate. And they would have had cookies, but they were still out of milk. So they ate popcorn and cotton candy instead. Delicious. And that's the end of the tale. Hi kids, gather round. It's fairy tale time. Actually, this one is a folk tale. Or a fairy tale for folks. Or a folk tale for fairies. Either way, it's a good one. Let's call it folktale time. This one is about American legend Johnny Appleseed. Are you ready? Let's go! Once upon a time, September 26, 1774 to be exact, a little boy named Johnny Appleseed was born. Well, they didn't call him Johnny Appleseed back then. His real name was John Chapman. Little Johnny Chapman grew up and decided to go explore the country. Remember, this was over 200 years ago, so he didn't get in his car, or fly in a plane, or even take the bus. Johnny took off on foot. And not only did he go on foot, he went barefoot. Johnny was always barefoot. He even went barefoot in the winter. He would walk on snow and ice and rocks like it was a cakewalk. That means something that's really easy. He didn't actually walk on cakes. Why would he do that? Cakes are delicious. Anyway, enough about his feet. Let's get to the apples. See, everywhere Johnny went, he carried a sack full of apple seeds. He walked thousands of miles planting apple trees. Some say he just dropped seeds as he went along, kind of like Hansel and Gretel did with crumbs. But Johnny Appleseed didn't do that. He planted apple nurseries. <laughs> They're called nurseries because they're for baby trees. I wonder if Johnny read nursery rhymes to the baby trees. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner eating an apple pie. Uh, I mean, blueberry pie. Pretty soon, people all over the country knew the man called Johnny Appleseed. A guy like Johnny is hard to forget. Not only did he go around barefoot, planting apples, he also had a habit of giving away his clothes to people who needed them. Sometimes, he just wore a sack with armholes cut out. But the strangest thing about Johnny's outfit was his hat. He wore a tin cook pot on his head. You might think that's strange, but have you ever tried to cook beans in a baseball cap? Forget about it! Johnny looked strange, but that didn't stop people from loving him. He was kind to children and kind to the poor. He loved animals and nature, even bugs! One time he put out his campfire because he saw a mosquito get burned in the flame. Ouch! Oh, sorry about that! Thanks, Johnny. Johnny Appleseed spent his entire life just planting apples and happiness. Over the years, people shared their stories about him, turning Johnny Appleseed into a legend. The stories grew and spread, just like an apple tree in its seeds. And that's why we still talk about Johnny Appleseed today. Moral of the story, kids. Be nice and share your apples, and maybe you'll become a folk hero with a cool nickname. And best of all, you might not have to wear shoes. Hi there, boys and girls. It's folk tale time at Cool School. This one is called The Great Race. You ready? Okay, on your mark, get set, let's go! 
Legend has it that once upon a time, many, 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 many years ago, in ancient China, there was a rat. That's me. Not just any rat. This rat was the worst swimmer in the world. Hey, the cat's a bad swimmer too. That's true. There was also a cat who couldn't swim. Give me a break. Everybody knows cats don't like water. Also true. Nevertheless, there was to be a great race across the river, and so the cat and the rat were just gonna have to get wet. See, the Jade Emperor, the guy who pretty much ruled everything, had called a meeting of the animals. The emperor was going to honor the first 12 animals to get across the river with their very own year. Picture that, the year of the rat got a nice ring to it. I prefer year of the cat. Okay, let's skip ahead to the day of the big race. So many animals were there. There was a rabbit, a goat, a pig, a rooster, a snake, a horse, a dog, a monkey, a tiger, an ox, and a flying dragon. The cat and the rat knew they didn't stand a chance, so they hatched a clever plan to hitch a ride on another animal. The dog was the fastest swimmer, but the cat and the dog fought like, well, cat and dogs, <laughs> so that wouldn't work. The flying dragon could get them there, but the rat was afraid of heights. Finally, they settled on the ox. The ox was fast, strong, and the cat and the rat knew they would trick him. Hey, ox, you want to hear us sing a song? Yeah, I love music. Did you like it? Gee, guys, I couldn't hear it. Well, let us hop on your back and we'll sing it into your ear. Okay. The cat and the rat hopped onto the ox's back just as the race began. Their plan was working. On your mark, get set. Go! Can you hear us now? No. Now? Uh-uh. What about now? Nope. But I do hear a thumping sound. It was a rabbit. The rabbit was hopping across the river from stone to stone. Ah! Hurry, ox! But then the rabbit missed the stone and instead landed on a floating log. Ha-ha! <laughs> Bye-bye, rabbit! Then they saw the tiger coming up behind them. Then the dragon. Then the horse! Giddy up, ox! Yeah! Yeah! Weird that I can hear that, not your song, right? Yeah, yeah, life's a mystery. Keep swimming! Poor sweet ox. The cat and the rat were not being very nice. Meanwhile, three totally very nice animals, the goat, the rooster, and the monkey, were still on shore trying to figure out how they could get across the river. Not one of them could swim. Just as they were about to give up, the rooster spotted a raft. The three of them pulled it to the river, hopped in, and worked together to make it across. They even offered a ride to the dog, but she said, No, thank you. But you're way behind. You'll lose. Please, I'm like the fastest swimmer ever. I'll be fine. Then they saw the pig on a raft having a snack. What? I got hungry. I guess they never read the tortoise in the hair. On the other side of the river, the ox was just about to cross the finish line when that rascally rat pushed the cat into the water. No! And then jumped onto the shore, running past the ox to win the race. And so, the year of the rat officially became a thing. The ox crossed next, then the tiger, and the rabbit, followed by the flying dragon. Ha ha! I beat the dragon? I'm the best! Nobody beats me! The dragon explained that she had seen the little rabbit floating in the wrong direction and had stopped to help him. Well done, dragon! I am honored to name the sixth year after you! Yeah, but I got first place! Did you know that, dragon? Next, the horse and snake made it across the river, followed by the rooster, monkey, and a goat in their little raft. Bravo! I love teamwork. Teamwork, shmeemwork. I'm the real champion. After the pig and dog finally crossed the finish line, the Jade Emperor invited all the animals into his palace for a party. The rat stayed behind a moment because he wanted to make a grand entrance like this. But before he could, he heard a familiar meow. Meow? Remember me? Uh-oh. Hmm, meow. is this their song? I don't think I like it. The cat and the rat fought all night, while the rest of the animals had an awesome time celebrating with the Jade Emperor. To this day, people still celebrate the 12 animals of the Chinese Zodiac. Oh yeah, and cats and rats still don't get along. Meow. The end. It would be bananas to miss an episode of Cool School. So subscribe! Clock right here! And comment below! Tell us which animal was your favorite!